With Allah's name, the, mer the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, prophethood. Description of the people of Ard. The people of Ard lived many years in the windswept hills of an area between Yemen and Oman. They were physically well built and renowned for their craftsmans crafts craftsmanship especially in the construction of tall buildings with lofty towers. They were outstanding among all the nations in power and wealth, which unfortunately made them arrogant and boastful. Their political power was held in the, la in the hand of unjust rulers, against one no one dared to raise a voice. They were not ignorant of the existence of Allah, nor did they refuse to worship him. What they did refuse was to worship Allah alone. They worshipped other gods also, including idols. This is one sin Allah does not forgive. Description of Hud Allah wanted to guide and discipline these people, so he, went, so he sent a prophet from among them. This wed, this prophet was Hood, a noble man who handled this task with great re resoluteness, resoluteness and tolerance, reported that he was Hood ibn Shalik, reported that, that prophet Hood was from a tribe called Ad ibn, who were Arabs living in al in Yemen between Oman and Hadramaut on a land called Ashar stretching out into the sea. The name of the valley was Murid. Some traditions claimed that Hud was the first person who spoke Arabic while others claimed that Noah was the first. It was also said that Adam was the first. Hood's appeal to his people condemned idol worship and admonished his people. My people, what is the benefit of these stones that you carve with your own hands and worship? In reality, it is an insult to the intellect. There is only one deity worthy of worship, and that is Allah. Worship of him, and him alone, is compulsory on you. He created you, he provides for you, and he is the one who will cause you to die. He gave you wonderful phys physics and blessed you in many ways. So believe in him and do not be blind to his favours or the same fate that destroyed Noah's people will overtake you. With such reasoning, Hood hoped to instil faith in them. But they refused to accept his message. His people asked him, Do you desire to be our master with your call? What payment do you want? Hood tried to make them understand that he would receive his payment reward from Allah. He did not demand anything from them except that they let the light of truth touch their minds and hearts. Hood's appeal to his people, Quranic Allah, the Almighty states, and to our people we said their brother, Hud. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other Allah, God, Allah, God, but Him. Certainly you do nothing but invent lies, O oh my people. I ask of you no reward for it, the message. My reward is only from Him who created me. Will you not then understand, and O oh my people, ask forgiveness of your Lord, and then repent to him? 
he will send you from the sky abundant rain and add strength to your strength. So do not turn away as mudri mean, criminals, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah. They said, O Hood, no evidence have you brought us, and we shall not leave our gods for your mere saying. We are not believers in you. All that we say is that some of our gods, gods, false deities, have seized you with evil madness. He said, I call Allah to witness and bear you witness that I am free from that which you ascribe as partners in worship and with him Allah. So plot against me, all of you, and give me no respite. I put my trust in Allah, my Lord and your Lord. There is not a moving living creature, but he has grasped of its forelock. Verily, my Lord is on the straight path, the truth. So if you turn away, still I have conveyed the message with, with, with which I was sent to you. My Lord will make another people succeed you, and you will not harm him in the least. Surely my Lord is guardian over all things. Hood explains the day of judgment. Hood tried to speak to them and to explain about Allah's blessings how Allah the Almighty had made them Noah's successors, how he had given them strength and power, and how he sent them rain to revive the soil. Hud's people looked about them and found they were the strongest on earth, so they became prouder and more obstinate. Thus they argued a lot with Hud. They asked, O Hud, do you say that later we die and turn into dust? We will be resurrected, he replied. Yes, you will come back on the day of judgment, and each of you will be asked about what you did. <coughs> A peal of laughter was heard after the last statement. How strange Hood's claims Ah, the disbelievers muttered among themselves. They believed that when man dies, his body decays <coughs> and turns into dust, which is swept away by the wind. How could that return to its original state? Then what is the significance of the Day of Judgment? Why does the dead return to life. All these questions were patiently received by Hood. He then addressed his people concerning the Day of Judgment. He explained that belief in the Day of Judgment is essential to Allah's justice, teaching them the same thing that every prophet taught about it. Hood explained that justice demands that there be a Day of Judgment, but because good is not always victorious in life. Sometimes evil overpowers good. Will such crimes go unpunished? If we suppose there is no day of judgment, then a great injustice will have prevailed, but Allah has forbidden injustice. <coughs>